Burgers after drinking, break even formula and target profit. This is Ken Boyd with the Accounting Accidentally Substack site. So in college, we always ate Emma's after for dinner on Saturdays that were named for Emma, our cook. Now at Kansas, where I went, KU, we had both football and basketball games on many Saturday afternoons. We usually lost the football games and won the basketball games. Of course, these events involved drinking, so I don't know how if I actually tasted the burgers I ate on Saturday night. And this post explains break-even formula target net profit using a restaurant that serves burgers as an example. Business environment for restaurants. So times are tough for many restaurants is a really good article the Wall Street Journal explains. Independent restaurants are on financial life support owners say squeezed between escalating payroll costs, diners dwindling tolerance for ever higher checks. Wages for wait staff, table buses, and line cooks is growing more expensive for many eateries this year with 22 states raising the minimum wage for hourly workers. Ouch. Real challenges if you own a restaurant. So let's assume that Sally owns Chef Zorba's in Denver, which is a restaurant that was used in the journal story. Going over target net profit, you also may see this formula stated as target net income. So to make decisions on sales, costs, and prices, Sally starts with the break-even formula. Sale price times units, variable cost times units sold, less fixed costs and total dollars. Important that you always use fixed costs and total dollars, not per unit. Set to zero, zero profit. So as you can see, the formula calculates sales less both variable costs and fixed costs. And the goal is to cover all the costs with sales. Now, it's not too exciting, but the starting point for business planning is don't lose money. So let's start there. Now let's assume that Sally is trying to generate an $80,000 profit for the year. So you plug in that profit number to the formula and you get her target net income, target profit. So I have the formula set up equal to an $80,000 profit. Dealing with price pressure, as the article mentioned, how much are you willing to pay for a cheeseburger? We find out in the article that Chef Zorba's charges $15.75 for a baked cheeseburger and fries and other stuff. $5 more than in 2008, five years ago, six years ago. In January, the prices for food eaten away from home were up 30% compared with the same month in 2019, according to the Labor Department. Customers are seeing price increases with many products and services. I had to replace an electric razor last week, and I went to Walmart. And the price was 30% higher than I paid about a year ago. Very surprising. So how does that impact Sally's target profit formula? It's less likely that Sally could increase prices to increase her total sales dollars. So let's plug in 1575 as a sale price per unit. So now we have 1575 sale price in bold, $80,000 profit in bold. What about adding in costs? Again, from the article, Denver has increased its minimum wage annually since 2020, most recently in January to 1829 an hour, while Colorado has expanded paid sick leave and other employee benefit requirements. So some of these people, in addition to higher wages, may also have to be paid higher benefits. So I'll add variable costs to the formula, assuming that labor costs per hour and other variable costs total $8 for every burger sold. So I've added $8 variable cost per unit to the formula. Let's keep going with fixed costs. Let's assume that Chef Zorba's fixed costs include rent, insurance, and other expenses, and assume that the fixed costs total $150,000 annually. So plug in $150,000 fixed costs in total dollars. That's not unrealistic given how much a restaurant with a lot of square footage is paying just in rent costs on their facility. Okay, sales to reach target profit. So the moment of truth, how many burgers does Sally have to sell to reach $80,000 target profit? So hold on to your hat. I'm going to use some algebra <clears throat> to solve for the one variable I haven't solved for yet, units sold. And you can see that the units sold is the 230,000 divided by 775, which I calculated here. Almost 30,000 burgers a year is what Sally needs to sell. Now, that's an extreme case because the restaurant may sell dozens of other items, not just one burger. But it does give you 
the process that you walk through to compute your target profit. So what could we do? What could Sally do to improve the results? What about cutting costs? One option is to cut costs and the big item besides labor costs is food costs. From the article, the industry's economic strange had been seen on the appetizer plate at Chef Zorba's. The owner recently swapped Greek green beans for homemade stuff, grape leaves to save money. You could also change the business model. What about shifting takeout? Well, it turns out, according to the restaurant owner, it figures it costs him a dollar more per customer every time someone places a to-go order because of the extra expense of packaging, which I hadn't thought of before I read the article. Packaging utensils and condiments add to the total cost. So he's actually, this restaurant owner, separate, is losing money a dollar per customer every time there's a takeout order. So takeout might not be the answer, but other business new business models might be. Maybe it's catering. It's never easy and particularly challenging in the restaurant business, but the target profit formula helps you plan and make adjustments. So it's food for thought. And for more articles in accounting and finance, you can go to Accounting Accidentally at Substack. Thanks.